I have said over and over, the best bang for the buck was the Gibson Les Paul Supreme. And then Gibson stopped making it. So myself and many others begged, please bring back the Supreme. And I'm so excited to say, Gibson listened. And come around Halloween, the Supreme returns. Thank you, Gibson. Thank you for listening to all of us because I, for one, had a big, giant, gaping hole in my heart where the Gibson Les Paul Supreme used to be. It, it was empty, and now I feel whole. Gibson did what they so often do, which is give us something amazing, and then they took it away. But then we asked over and over and over and over, please, Gibson, bring back the Supreme. After much whispers, up in the tower, Gibson has revealed that they are, in fact, bringing back the Les Paul Supreme. But I wanna talk about a little bit of the history of the Les Paul Supreme so we understand where it's come and then we can look at some of the new ones that have been teased by Cesar and see where they're going. So what makes a Les Paul Supreme so freaking cool? Well, the reason I loved the Les Paul Supreme was because when I bought this guitar and I bought this guitar, they were substantially cheaper than a Les Paul Custom. I wanna say I got this for about 1,900 bucks and I got this for about $1,600. And at the time, you could not get a Les Paul Custom for less than $2,500. Look at that, first off. Look at that top. You not only have the back and forth, but I could play tic-tac-toe up and down. Look at all those lines. This thing's beautiful. But not only did it have a 4A top, but they have this carved, beautiful back with binding all the way around it. Another thing that was indicative of this guitar were the split block inlays from the Super 400, which just scream regal and you can't afford me because I'm expensive, but not really. And then of course, this beautiful headstock with Supreme right on it, an abalone with kajillion ply binding and a nice gold Les Paul truss rod cover. Absolutely gorgeous. These frets are something you'll only see on pretty much the Supreme guitars. You don't really see them on anything else. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, how much cooler do you get? 4A top, 4A back, super 400 inlays, a freaking globe, an abalone on the headstock, and then gold fret wire, I'm in. And the fact I was able to get this guitar for again, less than a Les Paul Custom, winning. But in that period of time, in the last five years when I've been talking about this, saying it was the greatest deal, these guitars have gone up incredibly. It is not unusual to see these guitars going for 4,500, maybe even $5,000 now. Myself and many of my friends on the interwebs have gone to the highest mountains and cried that this is the greatest guitar. People got the memo. And it showed by how many people have been buying these guitars and the prices that these guitars are now going for. And of course, since they're not making them anymore, they're not getting any less rare. So we have your normal run of the mill. This one is a trans black, obviously. And then Gibson came out with this limited edition guitar of the month, this Autumn Burst Supreme. But in this case, as you notice, you see those gold frets, but no inlay. And this one's cool because it has a flame maple back, but it has a quilt maple top. And I joke around at this time that there was honorary Supremes because where you have this Les Paul Supreme, has no inlays. Well, this 50th anniversary Explorer and the 50th anniversary V got the Super 400 block inlays. So I, I kind of consider this guy an honorary Supreme. Then in 2014, they came out with an even cooler Supreme, as far as I'm concerned. The Supreme F hole, which I'm pretty sure they only made about 100 of these in Caribbean blue. And they also came out with the Les Paul Supreme Florentine, which I'm gonna be doing a video on shortly. So stay tuned for that. But the thing that's cool about this guitar, the 4A top, I mean, and this is as nice of a top as, as I've ever seen on any guitar. You got the crazy back, 
the gajillion ply binding. And this one has a floating Johnny Smith mini humbucker. And you got the 498, which has been the staple pickup of the Les Paul Supreme. The only thing that was kind of wacky about these guitars is that they have this Supreme headstock, which says Supreme on it. But to be honest with you, let's be real. It's pretty freaking goofy looking. Kind of like my face. We had this guy. We had the 90th anniversary for Les Paul's birthday, which is a gold top Supreme. Another one I'm going to be doing a video on. And I have back there. And then they came out with the 125th anniversary Les Paul Supreme, which was shrouded in mystery. They said they were going to make a hundred of them. As my friend Kevin figured out in the Gibson Les Paul Supreme group, there's definitely not a hundred of them. As serendipity would have it, I got to meet my friend George Matthews Sr. at Gibson. The guy who's actually on the research and development plaque. If you walk around the Gibson floor, it's George Matthews Sr.'s research and development lab. Because George, as a gift for working for decades at Gibson. I believe it was something like 40 years. They gave him a Gibson Les Paul Supreme 125th anniversary. And I think it was number 34 or 35. I forget. I forget these things, guys. I don't know exactly. Someone's going to be like, it's 33! George was the connection of what really happened. We found out that they didn't make 100 of them because they didn't have enough wood at the time at Gibson. And George got the last one. When I went to Gibson recently, I was walking around the floor with Mark Ignacy. He's showing me things. This big tall guy with a Hawaiian shirt comes walking down. He's like, Benny, I got something for you. Now I've never met George. We were just texting back and forth. And he said, I have something special for you. First and foremost, he introduced me to Jim DeCola. And for those that don't know, Jim DeCola is like the head luthier at Gibson. He helped design the Wolfgang guitar with Eddie Van Halen at PV. And he was a master builder and a, just the dude that ran the shop at Fender for like a decade. He's kind of like guitar royalty. He is guitar royalty. And FYI, the dude shreds on a skateboard. He lives it. He's that guy. Comes down with a huge giant smile all tan. Hey, Betty, nice to meet you. You know what these two guys do? They corner me and they say, hey, we heard you like the Les Paul Supreme. How did you know, George? How did you know, Jim? You know me too well. We got something special for you. What do you mean? Now, meanwhile, Mark Ignacy is walking around with everybody and I'm being the jerk that is not following the tour. I'm just going off into La La Land with my buddy George. And George brings me over and he says, there's somebody here that has a 46 year build. Meaning they had worked at Gibson for 46 years and because of that, they were gonna be gifted a Les Paul Supreme. Benny, do you want to put this Les Paul Supreme together? What? George Matthews Sr.? Yeah, Benny, do you want to glue, as you can see, the top cap and the back cap of a Les Paul Supreme, which by the way, at this time, wasn't being manufactured. So this is a one-off guitar for this person. There are very few things in life that make me that excited because George Matthews Sr. knows that in the deep depths of my soul that there are very few things that will make me more excited and happy than to assemble one of these beautiful instruments. One I've talked about forever, for those that don't know. There's no back plate. How do you fit all that guts in? How do you get this in? How do you make that all happen? I'm gonna roll that video of me at Gibson right now. And many thanks to my buddy Christian for filming it because we were kind of on the down low. I'm just like handing him my, film this. This is gonna be important. I'm gonna use this for a video. Which by the way, I did ask Jim and I did ask George if I could use this video in my video because one reason I haven't talked about this sooner is because I don't just open my mouth. When Gibson tells me things, I go, shh, I go, can't wait for everybody to find out. Because I've known about the Supreme. I saw the headstocks. I've known about it because Gibson has been so kind as to let me into their circle of trust. I didn't tell you, but now I'm happy to say they're coming back. And as I roll this video, I'm going to read directly 
from Gibson's general manager, Jeff Allen. What was going through their heads as they made this guitar? That if you guys have any question, it comes from the horse's mouth. The horse being Jeff Allen. We started off with the intention of creating a truly new Les Paul. Several times in the last two years, we, Keith Medley, engineer, Tom Montgomery, plant manager, and myself, Jeff Allen, general manager, had discussed the desire to create a new Les Paul. We decided a carved flame back to match the top would be all we needed to achieve our objective. I had given the challenge to eliminate all the access pockets or routing of any kind on the back of the guitar. I wanted the beautiful flame to show without any of the plastic pocket covers showing. This was the most difficult part of the design for our engineer, Keith Medley. He started to toy with the idea of the jack hole access as a means of entry into the CPA pocket. We tried to squeeze smaller pots in the existing jack hole space and assemble it like an ES style setup, but it was going to be too confined even for the best final assembly veteran we've got. We used the same size mahogany thickness that we use on our standards and customs. For the creamy center with the intent of routing chambers and gluing a maple back on top of the chambers. To help balance the weight and adjust some sound qualities, we designed a series of large chambers throughout the body, leaving rim thickness reasonable, but not too thick. We designed the internal cavity routings to provide wiring access to the pickups in pots. After the chamber was drawn in, it was time to tackle the wiring. By routing the three-way switch channel a bit wider and going the full depth of the mahogany blank, it allowed us to run the wire through the rhythm pickup cavity. From there, it traveled unhindered from the switch chip area, down past the pickup cavities to the slightly oversized rectangular jack hole. We knew we were going to have a hard time installing the pots without a back cavity. By cutting out a rectangular hole in place of the round 7 8 jack hole in the body, just big enough to slip one of our long pots in diagonally, we were able to make this work. Through the trial and error, it became evident that the only practical way to wire this up was to separate it into two parts. One, install the switch by running the wire through the rhythm pickup down the jack hole. Two, with your fingers, use the room from the oversized wire slot to place the three-way switch in the top bout chamber over to the switch hole, where you can get a nut on it and secure it. The maple back and maple top are glued in and chambers routed out, top card bound and shaped before the maple back is glued on. I started tossing around the names for this project and landed on LP Supreme, keeping with a top of the line name for the Les Paul. I also designed the banner globe inlay for the head veneer and passed this information to our engineer, Keith, who created a prototype of the headstock veneer by hand. We had a meeting with our fret wire vendor with the salesman tosses out the sample of gold fret wire. It is nickel free wire that maintains a gold color when the nickel element is removed. The pickups have longer wires allowing you to solder the pots outside the body. How cool is George Matthews Sr.? And if you didn't hear it, there's a part where Jim comes in and he goes, don't mess it up, Benny. I didn't. Check out the final guitar. George Matthews sent me this picture. Isn't she a beaut? Now it looks like the old school Supremes. Not this F-hole one. This guy with the gold wire, the back. But now the question is, what are the new Supremes gonna be like? This first photo you can see, there's a bunch of Supremes in this rack and they definitely have a new headstock logo. In fact, it's called the Art Deco logo. I've heard mixed reviews on this headstock. You're never gonna make everybody happy. I love it. I think it looks rad. Is it better than this guy? I don't know. It's definitely cool. I can tell you one million percent it's better than this guy. It's clear that those guys are gonna be solid tops. And we now have a three pickup version, which they did make a three pickup Supreme. My buddy, Kevin, look at his collection. I mean, that's crazy. He's got the three pickup, but they made them in very small quantities. So are they gonna be making this as a standard thing? And it doesn't have a figure top on this one. Just a few days later, Cesar dropped by the floor again at Gibson and he posts this picture in wine red, beautiful figuring, and there it is. There it is, that beautiful Supreme top. But one thing I immediately noticed, where's the gold fret wire? And when I asked George about it, he said, Benny, what you see is what you get. So I'm gonna say no gold fret wire. And I know for a fact, the new Supreme does not have a back. It's a crazy assembly. In fact, anything that's harder to fix than any ES guitar, because any luthier that has ever worked on one of these guitars will tell you. You gotta go fishing to get all the, the, the pots and 
the wires and stuff to, to fit into this guitar. It's not fun. So I have to surmise that they didn't put the back on it because, well, it's not easy. Now, there are many people that believe, and I'm gonna go on this train and say I 1000% believe that it's gonna have the same kind of neck joint you find in the Les Paul Access, and in this case, the Les Paul Higher Performance. I'm pretty sure that the new guys are gonna be a slightly different guitar. It's not gonna be the Supreme of old days, it has a new headstock logo, it doesn't have the gold frets, and one of the things that made a Supreme the Supreme is that every Supreme that I've ever met, other than the F-Hole Supreme, which only had the 498, you have the 490 and the 498 in every single Les Paul Supreme. But they don't make that pickup anymore. So is it gonna be Burst Bucker 3s? Is there gonna be a new Les Paul Supreme pickup? I don't know. What I can tell you is I'm totally stoked that the Supreme is coming back. And I will reserve all judgment as far as, is it awesome, is it all that I hoped, for when I get one. I'm assuming that the, the retail price is probably gonna be 4,000 bucks, maybe $4,500, which sounds like it's super expensive, but considering the fact that this guy was, I wanna say like $5,400, the times they are changing and it costs way more to make guitars. I also wanna say sorry to Mark Ignacy because when I was going through the tour, when George kind of stole me away with Jim DeCola, he introduced me to Keith Medley. You know, the guy that designed the guitar, you know, that figured out how to get all the stuff in? Keith Medley's this dude with this big long beard, he's freaking jacked, and he's got a hand like a vice. And he just looks me right in the face, nice to meet you, Benny. And I immediately thought to myself, that's the guy I want building my guitar. And it was such a pleasure to be able to shake hands with Jim DeCola, with Keith Medley, and with George Matthews Sr., who were all so integral at one of my favorite companies ever. And the reason I say sorry to Mark was because he was going and continuing on the tour, and I just heard across Gibson, Benny! Where's Benny? So if you ever hear Mark Ignacy yell across all of Gibson land, Where's Benny? Just know, I'm putting together a Les Paul Supreme. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?